agenda is approval of the minutes of the previous meeting of March 18th, uh, 2003. I have a motion. Yes, Marla. I move we accept the minutes. Okay. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. Minutes are accepted. Uh, correspondence. A letter from T. Boudreau, Relate and Farms. Letter from Mr. and Mrs. Nedwell, Read Hamlin Street. Memorandum from Town Manager Mike McGovern, Relate and Farms. Zoning news of March 2003. And the brief of the plaintiffs in the Blueberry Ridge matter. Um, okay, so that doesn't happen. The first item under old business is the Pillsbury Private Access Way permit, which is a request by Marshall and Suzanne Pillsbury for private access way permit. And I believe I have a note here from them requesting that that matter be tabled till the next meeting. Uh, any objections from anyone? Okay. So that will be put off uh, until the next meeting. We don't need a motion, do we? We do? Okay. There was no schedule? Okay. Well, I've been informed that there was a public hearing schedule for tonight. So will you re-notice it for next? Okay. Um, if anyone's here for that one, we're not going to have it tonight. Okay. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the request of the applicant, the application of Marshall and Suzanne Pillsbury for a private access way permit and a resource protection permit for a driveway to access a lot located at 78 Two Lights Road be tabled to the May 20th, 2003 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing will also be held. Second. Moved and seconded. <clears throat> All in favor? Okay. Unanimous, so that is tabled. Uh, the other item on our agenda tonight, under new business, is the Leighton Farm subdivision request by Joel Fitzpatrick of Wiley Enterprises for final subdivision review and resource protection permit for Leighton Farms. Uh, and what the applicant can bring us up to date. Certainly. Uh, good evening. My name is Owens McCullough. I'm a civil engineer with the firm of Sebago Technics here tonight on behalf of Wiley Enterprises, LLC. Uh, with me tonight is Joel Fitzpatrick, the applicant, uh, in case the board had any questions directly of the applicant. Uh, since we were last before the board for the preliminary plan approval, uh, there were some conditions of that approval. Uh, that we needed to address in response to the planning board, in response to the town planner and the town engineer. Uh, we tailored our final plan submittal uh, to address those and provide the requirement for that submittal. Uh, that included uh, the affordable housing deed rider uh, that is required. Uh, we actually provided quick claim uh, deed and meets and bounds descriptions for the Lake Farm Road and for town acceptance at some point in the future. Um, a construction cost estimate, the applicant has gone out for uh, bids to uh, acquire competitive bidding for the project. Uh, Foglio Inc., uh, who has built other projects for the applicant, uh, was the low bidder, so we included that cost estimate in there. I believe the town engineer um, had a recommendation on uh, that there would probably be some additional um, uh, monies that uh, the applicant would have to bond beyond that which the applicant is certainly willing to do and is typical of, of projects. Uh, we also provided a warranty deed meets and bounds for the open space, which is to be dedicated to the town of Cape Elizabeth, and also uh, some drainage easements. Uh, one is for the town of Cape Elizabeth, the drainage coming. As you remember, we're going to replace the uh, culvert that's underneath Wells Road right now, and then the applicant owns the land on the other side that's going to provide the town with a drainage easement. That was an important part of our overall drainage plan because, uh, as 
town engineer's report indicated uh, that culvert is undersized right now as it exists in, in right now. And by increasing the culvert size, it will alleviate some potential problems that could have occurred even if we didn't develop the, the project. Um, and so there is an easement for that. There's also an easement uh, for the Jordans for drainage going down to their pond. Uh, this is the corner of the Jordan pond um, right there. Uh, a couple of other things. Um, as indicated in the staff report, we would ask that uh, if final plan approval was to be granted tonight, uh, that there would be a condition of the approval that uh, we get our DEP permit before we start any construction. That's in process. We actually had a joint meeting with the town engineer, the public works director, ourselves, because the town's doing a review, DEP's doing a review. We wanted to make sure everybody was on the same page. So uh, that worked very well. And that is under process, and we expect that uh, very shortly. Um, also, um, there's some additional landscaping that uh, mentioned in the report uh, by the town planner, which is some landscaping, I think, up in this area, if I got that right. The applicant is willing to do that and would ask that that, that that be a condition of approval also. We did add a couple of trees down here off the Wells Road the screen. There's a riprap uh, outlet from the pond. Uh, unfortunately, riprap is the most stable way uh, for soil erosion, especially when there's a concentrated flow, so we have to do the riprap but we were going to put some trees down in there. And the applicant, uh, they're proposed as deciduous trees, and I guess this is a question we would ask the board if we could have the flexibility to work with the town planner uh, to maybe substitute, instead of a red maple, a different species if it's agreeable. Um, we were thinking in wintertime, the deciduous sheds its trees, maybe an evergreen would be more appropriate down there to screen that riprap, but that would be something if we could work with the town planner just to see if that would make more sense, we'd be willing to do that. Uh, either way is fine. Um, Joel just thought that might provide a little better screening. Another item that the town engineer had, and we actually have made these changes to the plan. Uh, we got the review comments from Todd. Uh, he wanted us to clarify a note that uh, there would be iron pins set at each property line at the intersect with the town right of way. Uh, which we did. And also there was a leg of the trail that was not shown on the subdivision plan, uh, but was intended to be installed and showed on, uh, shown on some of the other plans. So we've actually added that to the subdivision plan uh, to make sure it's on there. Uh, with that, I think that brings you current on the things that we discussed uh, since the last meeting. Uh, just to recap one other thing, uh, we've also, uh, there's a note that indicates that uh, the open space with the main natural undisturbed space for perpetuity uh, with the exception of limited disturbance for the construction of trails and or drainage and utility improvements to be completed as part of the subdivision. Uh, we added that note onto the plan and also we added a note, uh, we actually added it for preliminary plan, but the, one of these three lots is what's designated as the affordable housing lot and that note went directly on the plan. Uh, with that, I think that brings us current if the board has any questions, we'd be glad to answer them. The applicant is here too. Thank you. Um, I would just ask the board the first issue we have to address is uh, completeness. So if there are questions or discussions on that issue, if we could kindly address that first. It appears that it, I mean, the issues that were open from last time appear to be addressed uh, in terms of the completeness of the application. Uh, I have a motion, anyone? Barbara? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a motion for the board to consider um, a motion for completeness. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the applicant of Wiley Enterprises, Inc., for final subdivision review and a resource protection permit for latent form farms, a 16 lot subdivision off, located off Wells Road be deemed complete. Okay, we have a motion. Second. 
<coughs> Moved and seconded. Any further discussion on the motion? Okay, all in favor? <coughs> that carries unanimously. Okay. Um, we can move on to a discussion of the approval. Uh, before we get to that, I would like to raise uh, an issue that town planner has informed me that there has been a request that we hold another uh, public hearing on this project. Uh, just to remind the board, because I would like to discuss it, the standard in terms of whether another public hearing should be held is whether there has been a substantial change to the plan since the last public hearing. Um, I don't know if anyone has any views on that, whether that would be appropriate. I can tell you my views, but I'd like to hear from the board first, David. I'm not sure there have been uh, substantial changes since the original run through of this application, so I would, I would not favor a public hearing at this time. Okay. I, I would have to agree with Mr. Sherman, but I'd like to ask a question of the town planner if she's received any other verbal correspondence or questions other than the correspondence that we have in front of us. Um, I, I had a visit from an abutter this morning who had questioned whether or not there was going to be another public hearing. I haven't received any written requests. Not hearing too much interest in a, a correspondence, I'd be in favor of not having a hearing. Barbara? Here? I have no objection. I follow Mr. Chairman's comment. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah I, I'm of the view that there, certainly under what we have done before, uh, the changes to the plan since the last public hearing have not been substantial, so it would not warrant holding yet another public hearing, which would entail tabling this to the next month, having notice, and uh, and having another public hearing. So, um, okay, I believe we can decide that by consensus. So uh, that's that matter has been determined. So we can move on to a consideration of the application. Um, we've all seen the engineer's letter and some of the issues there. Uh, I believe many of them have been addressed. Uh, I guess I'll start with a question, uh, Mr. McCullough, about the DEP approval. Do you have any timetable on when you would expect that to have come forth? Um, based on when we filed it, um, it could really come any time, but I would suspect it would be within the next two to three weeks. All right. Now, are you beyond the process where the DEP would require changes to the uh, uh, the plan? In other I, words, I believe so, and that is in fact why we had that joint meeting with with the town and the DEP, in which we followed up uh, with a submittal solidifying any of those outstanding items. So we feel confident that uh, there wouldn't be any uh, changes to the plans that would change the design or the intent. Okay. Because if, if we approve this tonight, it would obviously be conditioned on DEP approval, and if the DEP approval then changed the plans, that would create a problem, obviously. Other questions? Barbara? Um, I just have one question about the additional cost that you think might be incurred other than the, the site costs that have been presented to us and whether there's enough in the, um, the letter of credit and the... Um, Joel just handed me a, uh, a summary of what's in the letter of credit. The uh, construction bid uh, uh, was $464,000. Uh, the total cost that he's carried in the and the bond is $516,000, uh, which includes um, outside of the Foglio bid, the street trees, uh, CMP costs, signage, trail construction, and a $24,600 $24, contingency fee. So he, he built in 
within that performance bond amount built in, um, well, a, a, an extra $24,600 in contingency. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Joel. I, I can pass this around or we should just take my government's already seen that. But. I noted on the, uh, the subdivision plan, uh, Node 20 set aside either lot 2, 3, or 4 for the low-income housing uh, lot. I'm, just, I'm not sure we've had a discussion yet about the, the type of structure that's going to be built on one of those three lots, whether the extent will be comparable to the other homes that are being planned for the subdivision. I'm wondering if you or the applicant could, could comment on that. I think I will let Joel answer that since he'll most likely be building that house. To tell you the truth, I really don't have anything designed yet, um, but it's going to be similar but smaller in design. Uh, well, will it, will it have, I assume that most of these homes will have two stories. This will have two stories. You know, it'll have at least two bedrooms, possibly three, all finished. Uh, garage, similar looks, shingle style to the rest of the homes in the neighborhood. But I really haven't uh, completed the full design. I have some good ideas, two or three in my head, that you know, jotted down on paper. But I really don't have anything, you know, uh, designed yet. Okay. Um, but I know the problem was with with a, a similar project in Cape Elizabeth, where they're having an issue with the design, and uh, I know of those issues, and I'm going to try to make sure that this. Yeah, I, I think the what what we would certainly like, and I think what the ordinance requires is just the design that's consistent with the other houses that aren't under the affordable housing. Well, I have a you know, since since I've this is my subdivision. I'm building all the homes in here. The first the first homes in the subdivision. You know, this this one uh, it'll be either on one of these two lots. We're stating two, three, or four, but it's actually going to be three or four. Um, and being at the entrance like that, uh, it's going to be very important for me to make sure it's you know, compatible. But it will be, it will be smaller as far as square footage, livable square footage. Right. It will be two or three bedrooms, you know, a full-size bathroom, garage. I noticed in the uh, information that the deed, or I guess you'd call it the deed for the affordable housing. It said something about 88% of market value, and that seemed high to me given what probably the market value will be for these, especially since it's for low-income housing. Maybe you could elaborate on that. You know, uh, yeah, Maureen might be able to explain that a little better. The, the reason I'm interrupting is because the applicant didn't draft that. It was drafted by our town attorney. Oh, okay. And we are talking as part of the planning board's current effort to make some changes to the ordinance talking about perhaps revising that that document but i mean i'm having a hard time understanding and i don't ask the applicant to try to explain it it was very long and comprehensive but i wondered about the 88 percent that might be something to do with that. yeah i'm i'm it would probably be more appropriate to to discuss that at the next workshop all right thank you I have a couple of questions or clarifications. Um, on, there's been some discussion, I guess. I was not at the last meeting, but uh, of the of the cul-de-sac. Is that finalized at this point? Is the vegetation would you just go over what you're planning to do? The the center of the cul-de-sac. Um, right now, the plan calls for two street trees to be placed in the center of the cul-de-sac. It to be graded and mounded and grassed over in there with those two street trees in the call to town. I think the last preliminary plan from the region 
Yeah, there was, maybe it was the same as you, David, that, that, that there wasn't any trees in there. And Joel and I looked at it and said, we should put a couple of trees in there. Yeah, I think it, there's a couple of cul-de-sacs in my neighborhood and there's no vegetation. <laughs> they look kind of stark. That's a good point. Um, regarding, uh, just go on the record, I think that uh, the changing uh, deciduous to evergreens in front of the uh, uh, riprap would certainly, I think, enhance the site in the wintertime as well as the summer, so I'd be in favor of that. Um, there was a letter we received discussing uh, uh, one of the items in the letter was that they were discussing on that west uh, open space area that adjoins the present uh, development that's up there uh, that uh, possibly there could be some vegetation put in there to reduce and I, I guess the person also stated that they discussed the issue with the applicant and I just wondered if you had any thoughts on it. I'm not sure which area it was. It was, it, I call it west between the present development that's just on the bottom part of there. There's a letter from one of those residents. Down in through here? Yes. This, uh, at the, when we were at the preliminary plan meeting, uh, this, this buffer through here is intended to be left in its natural undisturbed state with the exception of a trail through there. And that buffer uh, varies in width. It goes all the way from, I think, just about uh, 30 or 40 feet up to 100 feet in width. And we, we purposely um, uh, oriented the subdivision to try to keep that buffer in between it so we could keep some, some vegetation or keep a nice buffer in through here. The houses through here, in fact, we located a couple of the houses. You know, several of the lots are, are cleared pretty close up to the back property line. So in an effort to try to um, address that, we held the buffer back. So you're not, you're not going to clear anything in that property? No, you're no. The old, this uh, black line here represents the back of the property. Okay. And at, at most, um, the lots will be cleared to that line. Beyond that line is going to be basically sacred territory. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Isn't beyond that line part of the open space? Yes, it is. Yeah. Which would be under the same limitations as the other open space, correct? That's correct. And it will be dedicated to the town. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? The, um, the issue about the landscaping to buffer the stormwater structures, it reads now is so that it, it blends into the neighborhood. I, and you may have covered this, but what specifically do you have in mind? I, I think the areas that were discussed is between the, uh, the existing farmhouse or lot two is part, is part of an open space area. Our storm drainage comes down the road and discharges into a level spreader, which is basically a riprap basin that dissipates the energy that comes from the water, slows it down. And then it drains through a, a riprap swell into this pond, and then out through the pond down to the culvert. And what we've done is, this is basically an open build area now, some scrub shrub growth in there, but um, when we're done, we're gonna plant uh, along the edge of the road some, some this is why we wanted to go to Evergreen because we thought it would it would infill and screen better over time. But uh, three trees down and through here adjacent the road, and then along uh, up in here. And, and Joel has spoken with the town planner, but um, some additional trees. I think in the order of three or four additional. Well, pardon me, three trees um, to buffer. And I think the goal is. Um, this side of the morning, is, it, is that correct? It would be along the, along the edge yeah, of the swell? My, yeah, my concern was as someone drives by on Leighton Farm Road and they're enjoying the view, they look over and they see this big rock swale and the idea would be to put a couple of trees in there to just kind of break the view up a little bit. Not that you're going to totally block the view of the swale, but, but just to soften it a little so it tends to look a bit more of a natural landscape. So it may, maybe the approach is that they'll be staggered similar to what we were trying to do down here that would just break up that view. 
Any further information on, I know some of the abutters were concerned about the extent of blasting that might be required. Um, do you have any more information on whether it would be more or less than you had originally? I think it's pretty much as we anticipated. Um, the contractor that we'll be doing at Foglio um, has a lot of experience with uh, ledge removal, and that's one reason why the applicant uh, likes working with them. Uh, we anticipate uh, ledge removal um, and walking the site, doing our due diligence and site investigation. Um, we're pretty confident that there's going to be some ledge removal associated with the sewer line coming up through their utilities. Um, the roadway, especially as we go through a cut area up in here and then up towards the cul-de-sac. Um, so we do anticipate ledge. Uh, and the nice thing about design is the profile we can see where we think we have the biggest cut ledge and try to work with those so that we we are, you know, we're aware of it, we know what's going to have to happen. And the same with the sewer up through there. We walked it, looked at it. Um, and part of our survey work, we know there'll be uh, some ledge removal up through there. Uh, the contractor that's brought on will be bonded. We'll have to follow the state requirements, which includes notification, videotaping, foundations, and limiting charges, depending on how close they are to the structures. So it's still the same as we expected. Okay. I noticed in your uh, outline of costs, you estimate each tree to be $300, and I'm just wondering what size tree that would be approximately, because that would make a difference in terms of how things would look from the street. Two inch caliber? I think they're two inch caliber, so they'd be two inch diameter trees, probably in the range of 12 feet in height. <clears throat> Any other questions of the applicant, David? No. You want a motion? If you'd like to make one. Motion for the board to consider. A motion for completeness. He had ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted. I think we, the, oh, we've, uh, sorry. we've deemed it complete, I believe. All right. so. Motion for approval, findings of fact. Joel Fitzpatrick doing business as Wiley Enterprise, Inc. is requesting final subdivision approval and resource protection permit for the Leighton Farms a 16-lot subdivision located off Wells Road, which requires review under Section 16-2-2, Major Subdivision Review, and 19-8-3, Resource Protection Permit. The town engineer has recommended plan revisions in his letter dated 483. The town requires that any required state or federal permits must be obtained before a project is commenced. The landscaping should be used to buffer necessary stormwater structures so that they blend into the neighborhood. The town requires a performance guarantee from the developers to assure that projects are constructed in accordance with approved plans. The applicant has submitted several deeds which are needed to complete the final design of the subdivision. The application substantially complies with section 16-2-4 major subdivision review, and 19-8-3 resource protect, uh, protection permit. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Wiley Enterprises, Inc. for final subdivision review and resource protection permit for Leighton Farms, a 16-lot subdivision located off Wells Road, be approved with the following conditions that the plans be revised to address the items in paragraph three and four of the town engineer's letter dated 4803, that the applicant provide evidence of issuance of a DEP stormwater permit, that three trees be planted on the west side of Leighton Farms Road and placed to soften the view of the riprap channel from the road, that the performance guarantee be provided in an amount 
reviewed by the town engineer and in a form acceptable to the town manager that all open space road right-of-way and drainage easements be approved by the town attorney and submitted with the appropriate signatures and that there be no recording of the plat until the above conditions have been met. Okay, motion's been made. Do we have a second? Second. Right. Any further discussion on the motion? Um, I, I guess I'll just address uh, some of the issues. I know that uh, the abutters have raised some concerns about the project, uh, and we have, have tried to take those into account. Uh, the concerns, however, while uh, so, some may be valid, to me addressed more the issue of the type of project that this town has deemed to be uh, the type of project they want to encourage. A lot of the concerns and criticisms had to do with the fact that the, the lots were small, the houses were close together, it was on a uh, parcel that had that was prominent in view, um, which all could be valid concerns, but we have been working under a a plan which encourages cluster developments, encourages putting the houses closer together, setting aside open space. And while that type of planning can be debated, we are certainly bound as of now to, to follow that. And uh, we did listen and, and certainly take into consideration all the concerns of the uh, butters about the, the project, but I guess in the end, my feeling on this project is that it does meet all of the uh, criteria that we require, and it does meet the uh, type of cluster development that's now being encouraged. So uh, for myself, I, I would vote to approve it um, for that reason. Any other comments? Barbara. Maureen, I'll defer to you, but under number five, shouldn't we add the deed rider for affordable housing? We have the deed need mentioned. I, yeah, I didn't list that because the deed rider that was submitted was drafted by our town attorney, but certainly we could include it only because it's not signed, and that's been a bone of contention in the past. Okay. So I think it would be prudent to add that. And I concur with everything you said, John. Um, that's a motion. Yeah, is that a motion to amend the yes. prior motion? Yes. Okay, and that would be to, to add to paragraph 5? Paragraph 5, add the deed rider for affordable housing. Uh, do we have a second on the motion to amend? Second. Okay, first we need to vote on the motion to amend. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to add one more comment. I, I wanted to just commend the applicant uh, also for, in addition to setting aside the open space, uh, configuring it in a way that I think helped uh, ease some of the concerns that we might have had with respect to the buffering area between the proposed subdivision and the existing across hill subdivision. Thank you. Uh, okay, there, there's a motion to amend on the floor that has, we have a second? We did. Yes. Okay, all in favor of the motion to amend. All right. Okay, now back to the motion as amended. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Pass <clears throat> unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, I believe that takes care of our agenda this evening. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? All right, we're adjourned. Thank you.